Warning, do not listen to this podcast if hearing about freedom and liberty is not legal for you in your community. And if so, you should immediately move to a hipper community. Welcome to the Freedom Fiends Podcast, a weekly web lab where Michael W. Dean and Nima Vadadi cover the punk rockinist, hip hopinist current events, as well as timeless universal truths about life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, because there's no such thing as half free. The Freedom Fiends Podcast, available from freedomfiends.com. That's F R E E D O M F E E N S dot com. Freedom Fiends is proudly syndicated by Alterati.com, the Liberty Radio Network, and No Agenda Global Radio. Welcome to the Freedom Fiends Distance Learning Anarchy Series with Freedom Fiends Michael W. Dean. Broadcasting from my windowless bunker. And Nima Vidati. Go, go, Freedom Fiends! Let's Yo, we're recording. What's up, Nemo? What's up, man? Yeah. Yeah. This is it's feeds. <laughs> this is DJ Canonical with MC Library here. Library. Library. Fill, AKA fill, the Libertarian. Filling in for DJ Silencer and MC Chore Boy. Chow Boy. Yeah. Yeah. Chow Boy. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice to be here. Nice to be back. <clears> on the you know, I was, I was thinking about uh, the cast yesterday. You should turn up just a little bit. Just turn up. All right. All, All right. right. Yeah. Yeah. How's that? I was, uh, a little too loud. You know, Frank was talking about, you were saying like, well, F- Frank's drinking on his day off from a bartender and you're like, <laughs> you know, it's weird. People don't usually do what they do on their day off. They'd want to do anything but. And I was thinking though, he wasn't doing what he does at his job. He wasn't giving up. He wasn't other waiting people. patiently, <laughs> watching other people get drunk. No, yeah. No. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Turn down a little bit now. We're almost get good. some good. Okay. Drink. Some good, ro- good role reversal, right? Gets he gets to, get to be my, the one calling the shots. Get to my drink calling. Shots. Yeah, there you go. Yep. So today is, uh, well, let's lie and say it's tomorrow because that's when this is going to come out. No, this is, we don't have to lie. All right, this is no, October 22nd. It's coming out on October 23rd, so don't call in because it's not a live show. and We're already, <laughs> we're gone. Yeah, yeah. Well, <clears throat> yeah, I guess we'll be gone. Actually, Tuesday's my day off, so I'll actually be in, but not taking calls. So, my fellow macho libertarian flasher. Yeah, I'm a flasher. I have something um, kind of shocking to reveal. Go look at the Freedom Fiends podcast. Oh, you're going to reveal something? Yeah. All right. I Freedom should also Fiends have podcast. I should have you here on uh, on Pigeon so I can send you encrypted stuff, secret that we talk about. Mm, secret. Yes. Yeah. Okay. What would you like to reveal to me? Okay. The junkie girl? Yeah, the junkie girl. Uh, that we, we think is really kind of hot in a disturbing way. Uh-huh. Is it really a dude? It's a dude, man. Look at it oh, closely. Oh, that's gay. Oh, that's so gay. Uh. <laughs> man, that's a good tranny when when he can pass naked with no makeup and no clothes, you know. <laughs> yeah. Are you sure it's not wearing lipstick? Uh, I don't think it is. I think it's yeah. just, you know, whatever beat it into having those bruises, you know. It's been sucking yeah. something. Its lips are inflamed. I think yeah, it's a dude, yeah. man. What You think it's a dude or you found out? I don't sure know. I dude. couldn't. I was looking for... I was researching... I was re-searching on Google my uh-huh. uh, search for junkie hookers and just, <laughs> just really disturbing myself because uh, they're not all as hot as him, her. Um, but it, I can't find where I got this, man. I don't know. It looks like a Richard Kern picture, really. Well, then why would you say it's a dude <clears throat> if you don't know for sure that it's a dude or a chick? You just don't know what it is. Because I want to piss you off and freak you out and have you question your sensuality. Nah, it's cool. It's cool. I'm comfortable. Man. There are some disturbing pictures when you search junkie hooker on Google with uh, the image safe search off. I'm glad. I would hope Google would be up to that task. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously, you don't want it to be tame pictures if you're searching that, right? Right, right. Yeah. 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 Drank, man, drank. Providing uh, for the tranny hooker demand appropriately. Good job. Google. There used to be a crack whore uh, porn site where they'd get crack whores, buy them crack, and then interview them and then have sex with them. <laughs> crack whore. It was called Search Crack Whore Confessions for that one. Uh, let me open up my incognito window first. <laughs> what was it called? Crack Whore Confessions. Crack Whore all right, yeah. let's see. Let's see. Crack horror confessions. Real crack horror 
sharing their dot 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 sharing their dot 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 <laughs> yeah uh, huh wow Okay, cool, cool. I, to, I, I, could, I could dig that. That might be fun. I bet crack whores are funny. Like, I bet they've got lots of funny things to until say. Until they stab you in your sleep. Until, until they stab you. That's why, that's why something like this is great, because you get to <laughs> observe uh, it vicariously through a, have sex with a crack whore. Observe it money. through a powerful telescope. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Ew, yeah. this girl's injecting something into her veins. Ew. That's gross. It's crack whore, not, yeah. not bl- heroin whore. Yeah. Canonical. Heroin whore. Yeah. Canonical. 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 Yeah. Wow. 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 You know, I was thinking just earlier that um, statists are canonical about their <laughs> stato Bible, aren't they? I yeah. mean, yeah. that's that's one of the worst things about statists is they're so well versed in their canonical statehood. Well, there's something I really want to talk. I want to talk about something today that's uh, really dismayed me with how much statism there was. Um, I just sent you a link. All right. It's to a YouTube video of Derek J. And Ian Freeman uh, filming, I, I guess Pete might be in the backseat filming it, uh, filming a cop stop in okay. New Hampshire, Manchester of, you know, like they just, they were just being uh, cop lockers. They were like, you know, he rolled down yeah. his window like an inch and wouldn't roll it down all the way. Yeah. And, uh, you know, did, didn't want to tell the cop where he was headed, anything like that. You know, typical stuff you don't have to do. He was just yeah. flexing his rights. Right. Uh, somebody posted this on Reddit. With some title like, uh, you know, look at these idiots who don't do what cops tell them to do or something like that. <laughs> and it went viral. Idiots. Yeah, it went, went viral. Look idiots. look how many views this thing has. It's really disturbing. Oh, wow. And, yeah, it's um, like a third of a million. Yeah. In like a couple days. Let's see. This, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, this was put up March 15th, but it just a couple days. You know, it had like a thousand views until a couple days ago. And now it's got 329,000 views. It's I got so many dislikes. <laughs> so 11,000 11, dislikes. 649 likes and 11,770 dislikes. Wow. Read, read a few of these condoms just randomly. A, a few of the condoms? Okay. <laughs> condoms? Did I say condoms? <laughs> I think you said condoms. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to put that on my list for you. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I'm going to read the comments. Uh, someone give me this cop's Facebook page. I'd love to harass him. Oh, okay. That's a, uh, that's fair. Um, then after that, these guys are wankers. Um, I don't think he means the cops, though. I wish no. he did. And that's that's username 01865 if you want to go annoy <laughs> username 01865. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. Derek is a troublemaker. I can't tell if that's a good or bad comment either. That's, uh, <laughs> he's, ma- I wish- he, he's making trouble for the state, and that's a good thing, right? I wish we could look at the Reddit comments, but Reddit is down. Maybe this thing has gone, like, uber viral. Oh, uh, yeah. They shut I don't down know. everything. <laughs> shut down everything. Is that that's yeah. someone said about us when, when right? It, yeah, it was it was some of your haters. Uh, yeah, <laughs> they were attacking. Was it the fun forum? The Freedom Fiends fun. It was forum, the Freedom Fiends fun forum, which is we don't do anymore. We have the Freedom Fiends blog, which is a lot more manageable because I control who's on it. Yeah, and then and it looks some, a lot better. And then when someone gets on it, I just yeah we yell at them for a half hour on the <laughs> live show. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Cross yeah. marketing. It's a good idea. <laughs> Yeah, unauthorized search. I don't see any unauthorized search going on. Simply opening the door so he could hear the driver is not an unauthorized search. Because see, Derek wouldn't roll roll his window down more than an inch, and he wouldn't mm-hmm. open the door. So the cop just opened the door. Mm-hmm. Oh, and what Derek, a dick! And Derek I love started. Derek. Derek, I know. Derek's awesome. Yeah, and Derek Derek started screeching as Derek does. It's kind of cute. <laughs> Stop it, Mister! Bad touch, bad touch, bad touch. Or well, he's wasn't the, it? He's the, he's the John Stockton of the Liberty Movement. I don't know who that is. <laughs> What's that? He was a point guard for the Utah Jazz when I was growing up, and uh, he's a white guy, like six feet tall. What's his name? Awesome, like John Stockton. Okay. He like led the league in steals and I think assists, but um, often in the playoffs and the finals, you would see him try to draw a foul, and he was really good at it. Like he would get people to to bump into him just right, and then he would just like flop on the ground and flail around and draw the foul. <laughs> <laughs> Reminds me of Derek J. <laughs> That's that's and we're saying that with all the love in the world. Yeah, we love yeah. Oh, complete complete respect. It was great strategy. Draw yeah. draw the enemy in, into it, and, and, and it was from like, like a bad guy. I don't know if that's really from the art of war. I don't know if there's anything in the art of war about draw the enemy and then roll on the ground and go. Stop <laughs> it, Mister Bad Touch. Yeah, I'm touch, afraid. Bad touch. I like one of Derek's favorite lines is "I'm afraid of you." Which is, <laughs> I'm afraid of you. Yeah. Did you add that that that? If you add a little little kid N in front of it, I'm afraid of you. Which is what we're all thinking whenever we deal with the cops. But uh, yeah, 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 that's great. 
I like it. Yeah. Screw cops, man. Yeah. How come even when we praise people we highly admire, we sound like we're making pod beef? I don't know. <laughs> That's just the fiends, man. That's how we talk. <sighs> yeah. I listened to uh, yesterday's cast twice. Or one and a half times oh, wow. since then, wow. and um, man. So you we, you relived the same two hours. I do over and uh, over and over, over and over again. In, Groundhog in day, less less than twenty four hours, man. So you oh, I usually that. edit them and then download them and then listen to them, which is actually really good because the couple times I've made major editing problems, I've caught them and corrected them within minutes. Like the time that I put That's in true. the wrong URL and I had you know one called uh, Free Jillian and it was like you know the episode from that was already edited that wasn't meant to post till a week later instead for about an hour. Yeah. 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 It, I mean, it's definitely good. <laughs> I'm not complaining at all. I'm just saying, wow, that's dedication, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I found, I found a really good Stato argument or Stato comment here on the YouTube of Derek J getting harassed by these cops with, uh, how many dislikes does it have now? 11,770. This is one of the people that I assume disliked it. He says, this was not an illegal search under any laws in the state of New Hampshire. If you live on a mountain, A, you don't live in New Hampshire, and B, perhaps the thin air is impairing you cognitively. You want to be left alone and you want to use public roadways for your quote-unquote freedom <laughs> movement. You just don't want to pay your fair share towards maintaining those roadways. <laughs> This one says, I, "Hold on, hold on." The, the, yeah. the last line is perfect. I do enjoy complete all caps freedom, protected and ca kept safe all caps by high caliber police officers such as Officer Harrington. Enjoy Ugh. your all caps ignorance. And there was one about like, yeah, you 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 guys will change your tune when these cops come save you from a mall shooting. And I'm like, no, they won't. These guys all <laughs> carry save guns. Themselves from a mall shooting. I know. Yeah. They're well, going to be much two, better off than these the two don't. The but shooting. everyone that's with them always always does. So yeah. right, right. They, they take the they have Jeffrey their own, Tucker. Line they have their they have thing. their private their private cops with them all the time. There you go. There you go. This wow. video is made by the fine example of a douchebag at the four hundred three mark, which is you click it and it goes to Ian. Also, their squealing when he opened the door was fucking adorable. It was adorable. I'll give him yeah. that. This guy's being sarcastic. We're being right. <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah. really think Derek should start saying, bad touch, bad touch, bad mister. Bad touch. Yeah, yeah. Well, we could ask him that. I mean, he might He might listen. I'll send <laughs> this least, to him. At least once, right? Yeah. J just just play with it, you know. S switch switch up your cop talk every now and then. Yeah. See what works. See what sticks. Throw shit at the wall. When I posted that picture of me looking incredibly sexy uh, when I was about twenty, when <laughs> I was your age, that. You, you're gonna you're gonna remind everybody of that on the cast. Yeah, uh, about about now. ten women were like, "Oh my god," <laughs> and Derek also was like, "Hmm." Derek also. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. So, so uh, yeah, send send that picture and then underneath it our request. So that <laughs> now that I've that got your attention, creepy. that won't be creepy at all. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I want to hear you say "bad touch." Derek. Come on, yeah. let's hear you say it. <laughs> should we just call this episode "Why Derek J Should Say Bad Touch"? Yeah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> or or "Bad Touch, comma Derek J." Something. <laughs> no, that something makes it sound like he does bad touch. Oh yeah, I guess so. Okay, okay. Bad touching Derek J. Yeah. All right. all right. So the the real serious part of all this is that like I was really dismayed um by the number of comments of people denigrating this video. Um it it really makes me feel like you don't have a chance in hell if you ever have to go before a jury cuz you know out of yeah. out of 12,000 people uh 600 of them you know, well I don't even know what percent that is. I can't do math cuz I went to a public high school. But um you know, 640 out of 11,000 might get you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Although this was, you know, it's a weird, it's a, it's not a perfect sample. It wasn't random. It was like posted on the Reddit video site, which is, you know, also often has pictures of like Taliban's being blown up, Taliban's being blown up Taliban's. by Hellfire missiles. And everyone's like, ooh. How do you feel now, Osama? You know, uh, just uh, you know, yeah. Being when they when they blow up a wedding, when the U.S. blows up a wedding being party, being bloodthirsty retard[s]. You know, I'm. A, the, here's what it is. It really 
points out to me how violent everybody is. Like a high yeah. percentage of people are violent and they look at libertarians as violent because we carry guns or we say, you know, some don't carry guns, but say we should carry guns and think there shouldn't be police. And But then they say things like we should just nuke Iran right now and, and end it while, you know, quickly, that kind of stuff. Like just, yeah. it, just eviscerate a whole group of people for no reason. Yeah, let's do that to make ourselves feel better. Yeah, that kind of stuff. People are sick, man. People are really yeah. sick. So sociopaths, man. Collective socio sociopathy. Yeah. Yeah. And they think they're clean because they want someone else to do it for them. Uh, you know? Yeah. That's that's the worst part. Yeah. yeah. Although one of the comments of this on Reddit was, uh, you know, of course, they used the that cop was acting professionally, which we've debunked because you can't be a professional when you're stealing your money. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, I love that. Yeah. you know, one of the, the, com the comments said went on to say, like, you know, man. If that's all the cop does in your town when you act like this, I want to move to your town. And I'm thinking, like, where's Ian writing that guy? No, where's Ian's comment of, yeah, check out the Restate Project. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll let you stay in my house for a couple weeks. Yeah. Just, just move on. Move on, man. Yeah. Do it now. And you can, you can hold the camera next time the cops come in without a warrant and want to look at my water heater. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> man, how can Reddit be down? I don't know, man. I don't know. But yeah. I'm that's square. Is it the whole thing down or is yeah. it a specific yeah. subreddit? Yes, MC Library. Library. This is DJ S -S DJ Caniacal. Caniacal. <laughs> yeah. Caniacal, the mechanical maniacal man. Yep. Yeah. All right. So um there's a weird data site on Facebook that um I want to send you to. It looks like somebody is um like like it looks like a government agency is uh, is posting their data compilation requests from law enforcement. Um, I ran this by a friend of mine who's an anarchist computer security expert par excellence. Like he lives in Europe and he gets like you know flown to America and paid six figures to like go configure people's uh, you know corporate website corporate uh, intranets to prevent people from getting in um mm -hmm. but check out this link i just sent you yeah i'm looking at it now okay. yeah i mean it, mm -hmm. it's it's a page you know anybody how do you can how do you access the data it all seems to be in wall posts that say like data log colon 18 what it looks colon, like to me and and if you look if you scroll down and look at the likes all of the likes are uh liberty stuff and a lot of them it's are all, liberty like, stuff yeah, anarchy media yeah stuff. well a lot of it's yeah. anarchy media but there's a propensity of it that is anti-military uh mm. liberty mm. media veterans for anarcho-capitalism etc yeah and i think one of them's called uh Ooh, the troops soldiers are... deserve to die they're murderers oh my god that's hmm. really disturbing yeah um Wow. Yeah, don't 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 co-opt their language and their tactics. We want to be the and anti their morality. Yeah, not the them. We want to be the anti-state. Um, Turn up well, a little bit, Nina. I, Turn up. By, by we, I mean you and me, Michael. I not don't know that about much. These, these folks in this group, soldiers deserve <clears throat> to die. They're murderers. Yeah, but um, the the weird thing about this, I mean, it looks it, it's got like snippets of conversations of other people's stuff, uh, like stuff Liberty people said. Mm -hmm. And then it's got this, these like headers, like data log 10 dash three zero three Victor 11 dash zero seven transcript. Jason XXX said as a Marine mm -hmm. infantry sergeant with eight years of service and three combat tours in Iraq, blah, blah, blah. Intercepts one equal one IP verified. Um, what this looks uh -huh. to me like is the headers that would be on a data dump of Facebook responding to law enforcement requests with or without a warrant now ah. i think it's fake i think it's i think it's probably done by a libertarian to like make people think you know like maybe the guy who does mm -hmm. that sh that page the state which is the most mm -hmm. status state you know it's like a it's a, it, it's a parody of statism like everything's like mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. yeah like, but, like isn't I, there one that instead of the free state it's like the dependency state well that's like that's that. a it's joke and that's that's obvious but the state is like really serious you know they're like oh i want all these occupy wall street people and libertarians to uh -huh. die and you know it's good for patriotism to do so but uh okay. it's a joke and i'm convinced it's run by a libertarian but this is i don't know about this i can't tell but i I, I ran it by my friend who's a computer security expert, and he he didn't explain why, but he thinks it's fake. He thinks someone just started it to mm. 
I think it's fake because in the uh, data request headers, it's got um, NATO alpha phonetic alphabet stuff, mm -hmm. like, you know, Victor, Echo. Echo. And the thing Fox is, Trot. like, yeah. And the thing is, the rest of this looks like something that would be computer readable, that wouldn't be people readable, you know, because yeah. it makes no sense. But So why looks, would you use the NATO alphabet if something <laughs> which is, can be computer readable? Right, yeah. which is people only. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the, the NATO so, alphabet not is Not like for, the computer needs to hear it pronounced. I know, processor. I know. I know. So, yeah, I think it's fake, but it's uh I posted this and a lot of people were kind of disturbed by it. Hmm. I like the name of this it, one. It, it's it's very cryptic, but yeah, you're right. It could be cryptic in an art kind of way. Like yeah. they, they want people to look at it and go, "Oh, wow, cryptic." That's where we're headed. Yeah. Like, be provocative. Yeah. It's provocative. No one knows what it means. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That'd be cool. Yep. So, yeah, interesting. So the latest episode of Treme last night that I watched is is absolutely great as usual and uh, Treme on HBO. It's about Treme. New Orleans. How do the people in the show pronounce the name of the town? Is it Treme or is it like Frenchy, like Treme? Treme. Treme. I think the accent's on the first syllable. Okay. Well, okay. there's a but, thing. But about is, it, is it a ch like Treme or is it like a Treme, like a T and then a no, R? no. The the thing about New Orleans is. French words are pronounced with redneck accents the way yeah. a redneck who's never Creole. spoke French would, even if they speak yeah. some French or a variation right. of French. Yeah, like right. like Burgundy Street is pronounced Burgundy. Uh, okay, okay. Burgundy, yeah. Kind of like kind of like in the the road, the main drag in Austin is is Guadalupe, not Guadalupe. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's probably just from cops uh, shortening it on the radio when they're chasing someone <laughs> on it. <laughs> when they're chasing somebody down to shoot them for no reason. Yep. Yeah. Um, uh, that, that's a that's a jab at Austin specific, not just cops. Yeah. Cops but the Austin the like cops the cops in this show in the latest episode, um, so there's the city is going around bulldozing houses to uh, rebuild them, of <laughs> and a lot of them are houses that don't need to be bulldozed that weren't damaged. They're just it's like a, it's a it's a job creation thing. Yeah, and a, and yeah. a theft thing. You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't know what the thing is of who owns it when it's done being reclaimed, but uh, I doubt you own it as outright as you did before. And there yeah. were weird things, too. Like one guy, you know, he had to be able to prove he owned the house for them to not bulldoze it. And, you know, his wife had owned the house. She had died. She'd never had paper on it. Her dad had given it to her, you know, so there was like no paper on it. He'd been living in it for 50 years, but uh, mm. he couldn't prove it was his. So they bulldozed mm. it and threw him out on the street. Ugh. But which actually happened, and in this latest episode, the city council is going to vote on tearing down the projects. Uh, you know, and I don't even want to get into the morality of like the projects are, you know, paid for by the state or whatever. But I think in Libpair, if you decided to uh, end giving people stolen money, I really think you'd have to do it, wean them off like a junkie. Mm -hmm. You could do it quickly, but I don't think you just bulldoze their house and make them homeless. Um, so. In this episode, the city council of seven people is going to vote on it, and uh, they 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 have a they have one of those like for show city council meetings. They started an hour earlier than they say in the paper they're going to start it. They lock <laughs> they lock the gate. They don't let people uh -huh. in, and uh, they don't even let press in. And yeah. then they have cops outside, like keeping people from trying to get in. And there's protesters out there saying, like you know don't bulldoze our home and the city council votes seven to zero to bulldoze these four big projects one of which is uh, the project i got mugged at um and uh, you know uh, most status would be like i got mugged there they should bulldoze that and i'm like i yeah. got mugged bulldoze there. it back to the stone age <clears throat> yeah and there's actually yeah, in five years it'll be bomb it bomb there's, it send, there's actually send in the drones <laughs> there's actually a rich white character saying that in in this like well you know yeah a, oh, lot really? of, a lot of musicians came out of there but a lot of criminals came out of there they should bulldoze it mm. and then like you know mm. the the son-in-law who is uh a hip dude who loves jazz music white dude says uh you know the that's 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 the the establishment in this town being at war with the culture here and the and the mm -hmm. rich white matron is like how is that being at war with the culture here <laughs> bulldozing you're, people's you're bulldozing houses house. how is that yeah and the yeah. the guy who's arguing against that is the guy that is the character i like who looks like me who's almost libertarian but still kind of statist yeah. but he's he's the guy that runs for office on the legalized pot for potholes thing 
you know, oh, yeah. le- legalized yeah. pot to fill in the potholes on the taxes. Um, well, I, so, I guess there's like precedent for bulldozing <laughs> houses and not thinking it's at war with them. I mean, that's what yeah. the is- Israeli settlers do, right? And that's right, that's right. In, in the Western culture's mind, and, and we double think that. So I can see somebody double thinking something. Well, like actually, this the, the, that's a little different too, because the the Israelis bulldoze settlements of like land people own free and clear and houses they've built free and clear and not stuff mm. the government's providing but it's still mm. bad um i mean it's still bad what they're doing in it's, new orleans it's, so it's anyway still bulldozing somebody's house but the end of this episode this episode ends with um you know these protesters are like let us into this meeting we want to take part in the democratic process you say we're part of uh the cops start um, tasing and uh, pepper spraying the protesters who are not being violent mm-hmm. and um, t- uh, pepper spray a like really old man who's really sick and knock him to the ground. Uh, did the old man die? Was he okay? No, no he's, a, he's one of the Indians, man. He can never die. Although he has <laughs> cancer, but he can never die. I mean, he's, he'll Speaking probably die. Speaking of Indians I don't know. Who, who died from cancer, uh, did you hear about Russell Means? Hang on, let me light a cigarette. Mm-mm. Who's that? He died. I guess he's some really, really famous uh, Native American activist. Uh, there's a really good um, obituary of him. I'll send you the link, but we can talk about it maybe on, on another cast. Yeah, let's when, uh, uh, go sell some stuff here. Okay. A science fiction comic adventure from Big Head Press. Quantum Vibe. It's year 2523. There are colonies on Venus, Mars, and Mercury. People travel in bubbles, fly at hyperspeed. With brain implants and artificial gravity A scientific genius and his clever assistant Set out on an adventure through the solar system On a secret mission to find the key To access new frontiers and save liberty Quantum vibe There's a robot girl and zany creatures Made with genetically engineered features And corporate villains crave the opportunity To steal a profit from mother's ingenuity Scientific genius and his clever assistant Set out on an adventure through the solar system On a secret mission to find the key To access new frontiers and save liberty QuantumVibe.com well, we don't, Do we have to wait to talk about Russell Means? Well, I, I thought I was thinking you would know more about him than me because <laughs> you're old and he's, uh, he's, you watch movies. I'm he was old. in The Last of the Mohicans too. <laughs> oh. Uh, he was he was an actor and an activist. He's not the crying uh, was, Indian that was student. played that was played by a Jewish Italian in the seventies commercials, was he? No, I doubt that. No, you he, know about that. He, when I, I was didn't a kid, know was a Jewish Italian. But you've no. seen the movie, right? You've seen the ad, right? It showed when I was a yeah. kid. It was like an Indian yeah. coming up Some, over a hill, littering, or he's and he's littering. looking out at this river that's just filled with trash. It kind of looks like the place we used to go shoot guns. Um, and uh, it, he's, he cries. It does a close up on his face, yeah. and there's one cry, one tear down his face. But he was uh, played by, uh, let me see. I'm looking at Russell Means. We'll go. Iron Eyes Cody, uh, American actor, frequently portrayed American Indians in Hollywood. Uh, he, he was honored by the Native American community for his work publicizing the plight of naked, Amer- na- na- naked Americans. Native mm-hmm. Americans. Uh, in 1996, his Italian ancestry was made public. Wow, wow. No, uh, Russell Means, this is probably my favorite paragraph in his obit so far on the New York Times. Uh, he rose to national attention as a leader of the American Indian movement in 1970 by directing a band of Indian protesters who seized the Mayflower II ship replica in Plymouth, <laughs> Massachusetts on Thanksgiving Day. <laughs> the boisterous confrontation between Indians and costume quote-unquote pilgrims attracted network television coverage and made Mr. Means an overnight hero to dissident Indians and sympathetic whites. So that's, that's a pretty hilarious way to bust onto the podcast. That is to take over the Mayflower it, with it, a bunch of Indians, and it seems like it went a little better than when the Indians occupied Alcatraz in the '60s and just got drunk and beat each other up. <laughs> they did. They uh, basically were like, uh, "This is this is our land. This is going to be our libertarian paradise. We're taking this over for the Indians." And you know, within ten days, like yeah, they were small starving. Small islands that used to be prisons, <laughs> probably not each other the up. best idea for a libertarian enclave. Yeah, turn up a little bit, please, sir. Right, man. We're How's a lot more that? polite than we were on the Sunday cast. That's for sure. Uh, yeah. Well, the Sunday cast, we were trying to be assholes. Mm-hmm. That was like our goal. I know. 
Yeah. yeah. I'm Jankum Hornberg. <laughs> <laughs> Jankum. <laughs> I know. It's like, why oh, yeah. did we go after him, man? Of, of all the we, people, it was, it was a joke. We went after the way his name I sounded. I, I mean, know. we we dig. I dig J- Jacob Hornberger. He's talk he's about like Jacob Hornberger and why he's good. He runs. Um, a, well, I guess the, the thing he's doing right now. That, he is. He is. And and the big thing he's doing now. He's been on uh, Scott Horton's show a lot lately, promoting this uh, tour they're doing around college campuses with him as a speaker and Glenn Greenwald, who's a liberal but who's like the best anti. Uh, war anti attacks on civil liberties civ- civil liberties uh, guy that is on the left and uh, who else Bruce Fine I think liberals um, used to be anti war and anti attack on civil liberty what the hell happened that everyone loves well, Obama man apparently Glenn Greenwald is the one who's still holding the torch and Good. he does some of the best uh, analysis of what's going on and and what DC is doing as far as killing innocent brown people and detaining innocent and Americans and making more of a police state here in this country. Um, and the thing is, is it's him who's a liberal. And, What's his and name? Uh, Glenn Greenwald. Look okay. him up. Uh, a guy named, I think it's Bruce Fine. I might not be correct on that. Bruce Fine. I don't, what's his name? I don't know. Some some guy who's a conservative and was like associated with Ron Paul like back in the day. I don't know. Um, and then and then Jacob Hornberger who represents the libertarian point of view. So they got a liberal, a conservative, a libertarian, and they they all go and they they agree on on three on the things of the war and the civil liberties movement. So there's these three guys, three different sort of schools of thought, two so things. to speak. They agree on two things. Yeah, it's three guys that agree on two okay. things. Okay, so it's six but, you know, agreements all together. It's yeah. I guess it's really agreeing on one thing. It's agreeing that you know the state shouldn't be doing what it's doing right now with regards to you know uh, killing and. How violence. does Glenn Glen Greenwald Glenn Glenn Green Green Door? How does he uh, believe that? But wrap his head around. Well, the state should also use its violence to do good things. I'm not really sure uh, because he doesn't really delve into that a lot. At least that's not the stuff that I've read from him. He tends to focus most on foreign policy and civil liberties and uh, the media being a parrot box for you know generals and uh, the state and of statists. vision. State of the vision. State of vision. I yeah, love he, the I love the name of his book. How would a patriot act? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And really, he does he does a lot of reporting. It's commentary too, yeah. but. Um, I guess he never gets into that. He never, he never, you know, sits there and calls out for more money to be stolen or defends taxes or anything like that. Uh, he just attacks good, good, the state good, for good. what the state does wrong. It, that's just one thing yeah. he doesn't attack the state for is taxes. Good, good. You should turn up a little bit, man. We're having problems today. Not really. Am I really that too. quiet, man? I, I mean, I feel like I feel like I'm way too loud. I don't know. But no, you're good. <sighs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. anyway, when I normalize it, it if we're within thirty percent of each other, it equals it out anyway. So. Right, right. I'm not too worried. We're batting okay. nine thousand, man. <laughs> batting nine? No, no. I'm Over saying 9, I made 000. a new one. I made a new one. Oh, a new one. Okay, okay. Yeah. New shit. New shit. I new shit. Old. I made it sound. Fiends. I made it sound old. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, so yeah, Jacob Hornberger does that whole thing, and that's cool. Good. So, uh, yeah, he's not Jankum, but uh, Jankum is funny, and so we said it. Sorry. Canonical. <laughs> yeah. Canonical. 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 Yeah. Canonical. You know, it's weird. Whenever I search canonical on the internet, I get ads for Canon printers. <laughs> Why their printers? Why not their cameras? Like, cameras mm-hmm. are a lot cooler. I don't know. Canonical. Because they want me to not have N word technology. I don't know. Canonical and Ubuntu. Canonical <laughs> is responsible for delivering six monthly releases. Is that a it's got a, it's got, it's got a Linux connection too? There's yeah. a there's a Linux distribution called Canonical. I'm gonna have to get that because I'm not really happy with Mint. I don't know if it's a distribution as much as a distributor, maybe or a programmer. Uh I don't know. Google Canonical and Ubuntu. Yeah, I don't want uh, Ubuntu is a, a memory hog. It won't run on my one meg one one gig computer. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you should try to run Linux in a computer that that is like up to date. No, and, uh, no, no. That's you know? the point. I mean, I, well, I got five computers and I bought one so I could have it exclusively Linux, and I don't want to do dual boot. It's confusing. Don't do it's, dual boot. Just just do just do Linux. No, because I'm using all my other four faster computers for the fiends, and one of them is my wife's. My wife's. My wives. Okay. My wives Wives. all have to use one computer. (laughs) They each log on with pet one, pet two, pet three. 
Yeah, yeah. Kitty. I think Mitt Romney would be a lot cooler if he had more than one wife. I think he would too. <laughs> I'd be more sympathetic towards him. Well, didn't his grandpa? What is wasn't his grandpa arrested for? Uh, his grandpa was born in Mexico and then was arrested for I think uh, having multiple wives at some point in America. Really? Yeah. Mitt Romney polygamism. Let me let me look that up. Polygamy, polygamy, Mexico. Hmm, maybe. <laughs> Mexican polygamy. Mitt Romney's polygamous family past could be a sore spot on campaign trail. <laughs> well, he sore wasn't. I, I thought the point of polygamy was so you don't don't give a girl a sore spot. You know, you, you can mix it up. Alternate, yeah. Alternate, yeah. Yeah. Let 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 one pussy rest for a little bit. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I'm just saying that that was probably went into their thought process when they were designing polygamy. Hmm. I'm not a polygamist, nor would I want to be. One woman is is hard enough to take care of. <laughs> well, you know what uh, Cash Newman said: seven dating seven women isn't seven times the fun; it's seven times the hassle, and one yeah. of them always feels like killing you. <laughs> If it was seven women, I would think more than one of them would always feel like killing you. Well, I dated seven women at a time at the peak of really? my, my slutting really? around. Yeah. And, you know. They dated like how? Like they thought they were exclusive or dated? No, like they all knew about were, each other. There were seven other. girls you were boning at once. It was seven it, girls I was boning over a period of time. Uh, uh, uh -huh. You know, and I had them in, in a list in my phone book, and I would start with the most desirable and just go through until I got one on the phone, and that's who'd come so up So it, that it night. was ranked. The list was ranked. It depended which ones wanted to kill me. That would move someone down. Mm. <laughs> but not off the list, just down yeah. the list. And, and occasion <laughs> right. I was crazy. And occasionally I'd have two of them at once. It was nice. On my birthday or Christmas or uh. <laughs> celebrating the birth of our Lord, you know. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. hmm. Would they <clears throat> interact with each other or just each with you? That's a really personal question. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that's a little personal. Yeah. yeah well, that's depends. a little personal. Were, we, we, were, we didn't already break into the personal yet. Some were kind of feminist and didn't uh, want to be told what to do. Sorry for crossing that line, Michael. Sorry. Yeah. And then some of them some of them were uber feminist and, you know, I, they'd end up in my bed doing each other and I'd be in the corner crying and masturbating. Mm, is uber feminist um, another term for lesbian? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, lesbian and want to do it in front of men and not let him participate. <laughs> yeah, but that's yeah. not really dating. Jeez, I can't really say. Geez. That was just people that ended up there. Uh, yeah. Okay. Just people walking. I'm still kind of disturbed ha at the possibility. Having to be in the right place at the right I'm, time. I'm still kind of disturbed at the possibility of our junky pinup girl is probably a boy. Look at him closely. I think he's almost got a five o'clock shadow, man. Hmm. I don't know. The face is too narrow, I think, to be a man's. I, I don't yeah. think it's a. I don't think it's a dude. I think it's a girl. I think I the only thing that, that throws me off is is the the lack of long eyelashes. <coughs> but it's it's a Sorry. meth head or a drug addict, so maybe they burn off them. Yeah, pluck them. Something. I don't know. <laughs> Looks like a chick to me. And the lips. The lips are way too big to be a dude. I like that. There's a little bit of blood in the syringe too. Did you notice that? Um. Look at see. the look at the the syringe. It's pulled open. There's some liquid oh, yeah. in it, and there's a little bit so. of blood in it. Yeah. I guess so. That's sexy. Yeah, I, I did sexy, not notice sexy. that. Yeah, I noticed, gross, I noticed that immediately. I noticed that immediately. Yeah, yeah. I that that kind of shit grosses me out, man. That's not <laughs> sexy to me. I have a window open. You can probably hear the trains and the sirens coming to get me and everything. I don't actually. I wish I did. It would uh, it would be some nice room tone. <laughs> you room hear tone in the outdoors. I'll room give you a, a room. room, room. I'll give you a room job. That's disgusting. That's personal, Michael. Don't yeah. cross that line. <laughs> Mitt Romney. So, uh, yeah, was was his dad, his his granddad, a polygamist? Is that what what hmm. the consensus is here? At know. the heart of the issue is the fact that Romney's father was born in a polygamist commune in Mexico oh, wow. after Romney's grandfather fled the United States to avoid American laws against polygamy. He went oh. to polygamist lib pair. There you go. And this is according to the inquisitor and, and now romney <laughs> wants to like put a big fence and keep out the people who saved his his grandpa so he could be born has he taken that stance i mean i know that's like the the route stance i don't think so man has a, he Mass taken that? a massachusetts republican is basically like you know a, an oklahoma democrat or something yeah yeah although don't the democrats want to seal off the borders now except in san francisco where they want to let everybody in for no reason and you i don't know. know they all want to control people and point guns at people all the yeah. time so it, it gets blurred after that point yeah when i say I, let them let them in for I, no reason i mean I, it's i have no problem with open borders but i would want all of the uh social services cut off and san francisco's attitude really it's a sanctuary city they you know you can 
be a so-called illegal and go there and live and they won't hassle you uh, or let you be arrested for it and they'll let you get welfare and, and, and unless you, know, you just, unless you decide to to get a pet puppy or smoke pot <laughs> or have a cheeseburger or have a cheeseburger yeah or but drink you can, a big soda but you can walk around naked mm. oh you can smoke pot you can walk around naked smoking pot in San Francisco can you yep okay okay yeah, but if you oh, only, I guess if you I only, guess it was it was L.A. that that is trying to get rid of all the dispensaries, the city council in L.A. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, is, is is L.A. more status and tyrannical than than San Francisco, or are they just status and tyrannical in different ways, but each the same? Yeah, level, they're over it's 9, different 000? and weird. I lived in both of them, and I lived there a long time ago in San Francisco, and lived in L.A. Left, I left L.A. L.A. 2006 and moved to the to Agora Hills, which is kind of the upper middle class but not totally rich white neighborhood 30 miles outside of the city um which was actually starting to get really kind of scary when we left i mean like the week we left the atm that we went to all the time drive through somebody was like hit over the head with a tire iron and mugged you know and there were like a couple stabbings and yeah it was getting uh scary you know because People always think that like moving to the safe neighborhood or town will keep them safe, but they don't realize that uh, scumbags have cars, especially in LA, <laughs> or can steal them. Yeah. You know, can steal them. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, uh, I mean, like the richest part, the richest part of LA. You know, like the richest part of uh, oh, let's say like uh, what's out by the ocean on Sunset Boulevard, something heights. Venice, Venice, Venice Beach. Venice Beach has some scummy the, the, parts too. But. The OC. Um, well, no, the OC is a different county, but you know, okay, like, like, let's say, like, a rich neighborhood in West Hollywood is about uh-huh. nine miles from South Central. You know, it's not uh-huh. like it's uh-huh. another uh-huh. world with walls right, between right. you. Right. You know, right. You can take you a road can, trip. Right? You can take a bus if you don't yeah, have a car. Take, take a bus. <laughs> you ride a bike. Hell, take a bus and run up in some houses. <laughs> <laughs> Get back on the bus. <laughs> Uh, the bus driver tips his hat at you. Good, good looting. Yes, sir. Good looting. Yeah, you tip the bus driver with some of your looting. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Share the wealth, right? <laughs> Obama's so, gonna uh, buy me some ammo. Uh, <laughs> ammo stamps. Yesterday, when you were talking about the guy that got killed in uh, not Edgewood, what's it called? Englewood. Uh, Englewood. Englewood. Yeah. Which, by the way, was over a, a neighbor dispute. It turns out it was like uh, the guy who did the shooting and killing and burning was a pack rat and like his yard was full of trash and he got evicted and he believed Mm. i don't know if it's correctly or not that the guy he killed was the guy who turned him into his landlord but i think the landlord mm. would know that already you know uh yeah yeah yeah, but 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 well speaking of rappers in california and weed uh there's a really awesome rapper that i've been listening to named oso ocean he's really young he's from san diego no, it's it's also Ocean, but he's got this really great line. He says, uh, "He says California, get my weed from the government, take it right back from me. Ain't that some hustler shit? Like, <laughs> like it's it's government funded. Obama marijuana. gonna buy me my marijuana, <laughs> but then the cops go and take it back from him anyway. Yeah. Uh, so it, I thought it was a pretty pretty intelligent line there from from Oso Ocean. Oh, he says then the cops take it back anyway. Yeah, he says get my weed from the government, they take it right back from me. Ain't that some hustler shit? Yeah. Like they got like they got every side of the game. First they first they, they steal to pay for your weed and then they steal the weed from you. So in the end they have the money and the weed. Ugh. Man. So square. So square. Yeah, totally. But uh yeah. but but Freedom Fix from Oso Ocean. Listen to him. Listen to Mesmerize. It's dope. You'll God, Reddit's it. still down, man. For for an incredibly popular website, Reddit is probably down more than any any site at all. Hmm. Hmm. It's K. Hey, why is it down all the time? I don't know that they have ads. Reddit, maybe, maybe, maybe your computer just doesn't want to go there anymore. You go. Were we supposed to? Were we supposed to do an ask me anything? What yeah. Whatever happened to that? The, the people, the the liberals who run Reddit didn't want to do it or don't know who we are. Oh, you might be right. The top thing on Reddit right now is how liberal are you? This you can get on Reddit. I, I can't get on, get on Reddit. Reddit. Yeah. Man, that's weird. I, it it linked me to isidewith dot com, which is going to ask me where do I side on social issues. <laughs> Yeah. Wow, that's... and it's all it's also status. Look, what is your stance on abortion? The three choices, pro choice, pro life, choose another stance. They don't even name it. Uh they don't even name it's not the government's decision. What would, Should gay yeah, marriage yeah. be allowed in the US? Yes, no. Choose another stance. And there's no stance named of the government shouldn't be involved in marriage yeah, at all. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Or there shouldn't uh, be a government. Man, Reddit's down for me on any browser I try to use. 
That's huh. weird. I'm using Chrome. You don't have Chrome, do you? No, I don't think that's the issue. I think it's an IP caching issue. Let me try uh, going in through one of my VPNs here through like Netherlands or something. Uh, yeah. So read some more Reddit. Well, go to that. Uh, in your pigeon, there's a link to the Reddit. Oh, no, I didn't send it to you. Let me Let me find it for you. The Reddit link about this Ian and this Ian video with uh, ah, Derek. Ah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. I'll search Reddit. What did they name the, their video? Traffic Cop? No, what, can, what was the name of the Reddit post, I guess? I can I can pull it up. Well, <laughs> okay. Here's a good one. This one's called, as a member of the Free State Project, I do not uh, I do not endorse these asshats or something like that. What? Like, I'll send, How I'll do send, you be a member of Free State and not endorse Ian Freeman? He, like, is Free a State. A lot of people don't. Really? Uh well, a lot of people, a few people loudly say they don't, but you know, it's kind of like whoever has the the media is is the representative in the world's eyes. You know, yeah. this uh, the page you're trying to send me is down. I have a little like cartoon character saying Reddit is down with uh, uh, eight bit eight bit looking text. Okay, well, um, if you can get to the front page of Reddit, search as a member of the Free State Project. Search that term. Okay. Okay. Oh, now my other Reddit's down. Damn it, Reddit. Maybe Reddit just is down for fiends. And I realized yeah. I was a fiend. It's down for uh, liberty. No, uh, I'm back on the home Reddit. What did you say I search, search on the home Reddit? As a member of the Free State Project. Uh, member of the Free State Project. I just heard Mario get a coin. No, did that you? was that was me connecting to Bola VPN. You should know that. Uh, Aren't uh, you on yeah. Bola VPN all the time? Constantly? I am. I am. Okay, it's still it's down, and I'm I'm trying uh, to search from yeah. like Luxembourg, and it's down. Yeah, yeah, Reddit's not working for me either. Ugh. Why? F, F I, I can get to the I can get to the front page, but not the page we want to see. Okay, screw it. Yeah, screw it. We spent too long on that. Yeah. Sorry. It was just a bunch of people saying status stuff that you you know kind of like the stuff on the YouTube thing. Let's go to YouTube. Mm -hmm. YouTube's always up. We can read more of those YouTube things. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. People are like you are just stupid. Why do you feel the need to rebel from huh. Cerebral Assassin 1977? <laughs> Does that mean he's brain dead? <laughs> is that what is? It sounds like somebody mean? from the Mental Militia, which is a Liberty yeah. site, but apparently not. Uh, mental Militia or Metal mo Militia, spelled mental. like M U L. Mo uh, the Mullet Militia. There, there's there's a Metal Militia, and it's like M U L S H I A, spelled no. wrong some way. No, that's not what you're talking about. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. You're a bunch of fucking cunts. Deserve that ticket at the least. Try and show oh the God. least part of respect and decency for someone doing their job, Nuremberg. And yeah. whilst you're at it, get a life and stop recording gay wannabe rebellious fucking videos. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. Gay bashing, Nuremberg defense, ad hominem, and uh, douchey. <laughs> Stockholm syndrome. Stockholm syndrome. There you go. There you go. What's up, what's up with the mountain thing? I, I see another person saying, "I already live on a mountain." That was the second comment that referenced a mountain. Yeah, uh, it seems like a reference this, to something else. It's uh, Derek J doesn't say something about we live on a mountain. I don't know. <laughs> Why are you imitating yeah, we, him like we, he's four? I don't know. I can't do a good. You do Jack, Derek J saying uh, saying something about mountains. No man, he thinks I'm sexy. I don't want to ruin that. He thinks I used to be sexy. <laughs> hmm. He thinks he thinks your tractor's sexy. What? It's What's a dumb country. It's a dumb country song. Mitt right. Romney and Barack Obama's uh, web uh, sites on Wikipedia are both protected from edits. Really? So who gets to edit them then? Uh, respect, that, th respected at users with many. Uh, you know, it's just to keep people from like starting a new. Uh, or doing it without a username, with an IP, just an IP, or you know, starting a username just to to bash. Uh, uh huh. You know, go to freekeen.com. Uh huh. Okay. Which is one of Ian's sites. Um, there's an article on there about um Obama visiting their town, and it's like. It totally look. It's called Drone Emperor Wu's Domesticated Audience, and it's got some <laughs> pictures. I'm going to send it to you on um, the Jabbers. Uh, let yeah, me refresh yeah. our private conversation here because I feel refresh refreshed. Your privates. All right, so okay. check this out and look at some of these pictures. I'll link this too. Um, it looks like a f effing police state. I mean, literally, like you know, they turned 
Manchester, New Hampshire for this Obama appearance into like it's people lining up on the street to go through TSA detectors with all this heavy machinery uh, around like oh acting as a portable wall. That's awful. Look at that. Look at that. Wow. Yeah, it, you're right. It, it is just um, well, at least it's not millimeter wave, right? I mean, it looks like they're, they're regular metal detectors or magnumometers or whatever you call them. <laughs> so it could be worse. But yeah, they've literally made like a security line at the airport. On one side of the street, is it's empty except for two fed goons in suits. On the I'm other gonna, side, it's just this, this mass of, of people clumped together going through this state terrorism machines. What the hell? I know. What and the there's hell? a guy there standing with a pro marijuana sign. Do you see him? Bet- and the first one between the uh, two. Uh, I love how we're surfing the web and describing it. No one can see what we're talking about. But. <laughs> they will see. Well, we're describing it. We're audio only. And yeah. Use your imagination. We're going to link it. Don't be so damn lazy. Yeah. All right. Or go Pause. to Freaking. Admit, Mr. President, unreasonable police powers. www.unsm.us. I don't know what that is, man. Yeah. And somebody, a uh, couple of the goons got upset for being filmed. Like, you can film the uh, event, but you can't film our security stuff. Mm, mm. It's against their religion. <laughs> I know. There was an Indian guy that told me that when I was shooting video on the reservation once in Wyoming. Uh, he was like a janitor or something. Said you were I stealing his soul? Uh, yeah, well, I was shooting B-roll for some dumb story about how the school was closed down. And the janitor in there was like, don't take my picture. Uh, it's against my religion. Oh, uh, India dot. Not feather? No, no, I just, I can't do a Native American accent, so. Oh. But yeah, he, he was feather, feather Indian. It was, it was an Indian reservation. There's very few I was going to say, I was going to say, wait, you were in Riverton and you found a dot Indian? No, no, although that would be hilarious. I, I wish that dot Indians ran the gas stations on uh, Feather Indian Reservation. Ooh, look at this Marine with a sniper rifle up on the roof of one of these buildings. It's a, it's a, it's a sniper and a spotter. The spotter has a little handheld computer. Whoa. Second to last picture, right before Obama actually speaking. That uh, I would make that picture my lead. Let's I know. see here. Oh yeah, and the spotter's Asian too, so you know he's like really good at calculating trajectories. Yeah. <laughs> well, the guy that the guy that killed uh, the guy at Ruby Ridge that killed uh, Lou Haracha Harachi that killed uh, killed the wife shot her uh-huh. with a nursing baby. Right, a breast oh, shot her in yeah. the face. Yeah, unarmed, yeah. shot an unarmed woman. He was Asian. Mm, the new samurai class. That's racist. All right, man. All let's right. go sell some shit. <laughs> okay. okay. Ugh, I'm so sick of looking at Steve's wedding pics, and I'm all out of passive-aggressive comments. What else am I supposed to do at work all day? Sick of stalking your ex on Facebook? Yeah! Are you all out of cute cats and autocorrect mishaps to lol at? Duh! Freedom Fiends to the rescue! The Fiends now have a blog. Read all about the latest tyranny today. Dream about lip pair. Laugh while Western civilization collapses. Just click on the cat icon to the right of freedomfiends.com. Freedom Fiends blog. Read it! You've read books, attended lectures, and you know the Constitution well enough to know it's a well-crafted blueprint to create an ever-increasing federal empire. But there's still one thing missing. Buttons! Freedom Fiends now has buttons. We have Freedom Fiends, Anarchy Gumbo, and two designs for guns and weed the road to freedom. Wear them with pride. Use them to start conversations with statists. It's only $6 for four buttons, including shipping. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the link at the top that says Buttons. Did you get a tasty beverage? I did, yeah. I got some champagne of beers. All right. My life. This is, uh, we're rolling. This is DJ Caniacal, and you are? MC Library. Yeah, and we're filling in today for, uh, for, for MC DJ Silencer and MC Choboy. Choboy. So read this, uh, read this ad thing we got. It's in the second page of the, uh, of the show notes here. Oh. Someone wanted to put a link on. <laughs> yeah, I would call that a spam, not an ad. It, it's a company that actually sells ads. I looked them up. They've contacted us before, but I've marked this guy spam. Um, they don't pay really well. They basically don't pay up front. And who knows if they pay, but they want you to put ads. But read this and so read the like, name of the page he wants to put the link on and what it's for. They're like Google, but not as cool. <laughs> All right. Let's see. It's not, I don't see it on page two, man. Uh, okay, it says, Hello, I am interested in placing a promotional link on your page. Neocon right-wing hit piece against Ron Paul that's so silly it could have been from The Onion. Was that from the the accuracy in media <laughs> post yeah, that you were yeah. referring to there? Okay. The link would be for a website which talks about drug and alcohol treatment. I don't... <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't have the biggest budget, but hopefully there is a reasonable price we could arrange. Please let me know if you're interested, and if not, thanks for your time. Thanks. Mike you know, that's very generous of them. I would love to treat myself to some drugs and alcohol. Where do I sign up? <laughs> thanks. Micah Moore at sellyourwebsiteads.com. Hmm. Micah Moore. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We would like to uh, we would like to promote the recovery industrial complex on your critique of the recovery industrial <laughs> complex. Yeah, uh, well, we enjoy it. It's, it's not an uncommon strategy. Like you go to antiwar dot com and you see like ads at the top. I guess they're just Google AdSense ads, but you see ads for Mitt Romney and Barack. Join Obama the army. And, join the army. Yeah, yeah. Join the navy. And it's like, well, hmm. that's one reason we don't do that kind of ad advertising. Because mm -hmm. you have no control over it. I mean, it's bad enough with Google, like on or YouTube, on uh, on the Guns and Weed movie. There's always ads for drug rehabs and for vote for Obama and vote for Romney. Mm, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, well, at least it wastes their money because nobody reading antiwar.com is gonna. Join nah, it's the only if you click it. it. But 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 it wastes our money. Oh, it's only if you click it. Yep. Ah, okay. Well, yep. So. They only charge if you click it. So it just wastes resource. It just wastes time then. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and like you have to wade through it visually, you know. You mm -hmm. know, I was thinking about um that book. Uh, I, don't think it, I don't think the wade through visually though, though, because I, I feel like it just becomes noise. Like I well, barely see the ads. Yeah, anymore. but but that makes it harder to find what you're looking for, even if you don't realize it. Mm. I like a clean page, man. I like a clean page, and any of the ads we have, you know, the the visual ads are small, and the audio ads are stunning and entertaining because we make them, and they're stuff that we believe in. You know, I wouldn't yeah. take. I don't. I don't know if somebody wanted I guess I'd have a price you know if somebody wanted to pay us a hundred thousand dollars a show to put an ad for something ridiculous we'd put it on and then just giggle after it or something <laughs> make fun of it yeah yeah we'd use it we'd we, take the money we take the money and use it to buy ads against their their right. thoughts somewhere right. else to later we, we would make an ad making fun of it like chopping it up and making it uh, sound more ridiculous than it already was and put it on 30 rock it. yeah there you go <laughs> Although mainstream media won't take ads, even if you, no matter how much you pay them, for things they don't believe in. I, I would imagine so, yeah. Do you have any, like, really awesome examples or anything? No, but I, there, I know I've seen that before. I've seen, uh, uh, I think Ross Perot had trouble getting ads on TV, mm -hmm. and he had more money than mm -hmm. God. Yeah, yeah. Not that he was a liberty guy, but you know, he was he was definitely not the Democrat and Republican and really tried to shake it up. I he's an interesting story if you go back and look at it. Yeah, I remember liking him as a kid. Like I used to do an impression of him to my family. A lot family. of kids, a lot of kids like him. Yeah. <laughs> because he, I don't know, like he, I don't you know, know what the deal was. I guess cuz he's a friendly, laughable, funny old man. Old man. Yeah. And and he was different than everybody else, so you kind of feel like a certain underdog appeal towards him. Aren't there people who think that he was libertarian? Maybe. I, I, I don't, I don't even know what he was. Did he run as an independent? I mean, I was like 5 or something when he, he ran as an independent and had a really He's still alive. He's 82. He's from Texarkana. He's an oil billionaire. Ah, okay. uh, he also founded Electronic Data Systems and sold the company to General Motors. He uh, founded what? What was the company? Electronic Data Systems. I think they made hard drives oh. before anyone knew what a hard drive was. Mm -hmm. uh, they're from Plano, Texas. But yeah, he sold it to General Motors. He was Forbes listed him as the 101st uh, richest person in the United States. He had $3.5 billion, and he spent a lot of that trying to run for president. And he was mm -hmm. the last third-party candidate who ever stood on a stage with the Democrat and Republican in a during debate. A, during a debate. He bought his way in, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't even know if the media would let you buy yourselves in now. And so, no. yeah, that, that could be an no. example of how things have changed. Uh, I mean, they are not going to let Gary Johnson do it. I don't know if Gary Johnson has the means to buy himself in. I'm really sick of getting but. spam from Gary Johnson. You know, first of all, like, I don't vote. Leave me the F alone. But second of all, like, why are Gary Johnson fans backing him and not Ron Paul? You know, like. Yeah, there's that. And then there's the who cares? I guess that's my biggest thing is like uh, we should be focusing more and more and more and more on the ridiculousness of the political system and the idea that you shouldn't participate in it, even if that means voting. Yeah. I mean, but so, Gary Johnson is like a watered down Ron Paul. 
And I don't understand why people yeah, go out. I don't even know if he's watered him. down. He's like one drop of Ron Politude yeah. in, in a in, <laughs> in a sixteen a sixty four ounce soda of <laughs> Stato sugar. Well, no, I think you're describing Mitt Romney. Although no, people mm-hmm. people the Tea Party people actually they have nothing in common with Ron Paul, but they steal some of his language. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't think even if Gary Johnson does get some things right, I don't think he gets them right for the right reasons. Uh, yeah, it's all about I mean, the economic, not about the moral. Well, he's not even clear on economics. I mean, you heard Bob Wenzel interview him, and no, Ben Stone played it back. <laughs> I don't didn't? know okay. what that is. Well, I, oh. I I heard it, and Ben Stone also did a cast on it, and where they're like asking him who uh, Ludwig von Mises is, and Murray Rothbard, and what S- Austrian economics is. And the last thing he read about Austrian economics. Who's he? Who's he? Gary Johnson. Okay. And he and he doesn't know shit about anything, but he's lying about it. He's like, yeah. oh yeah, yeah, Mises, yeah, he's awesome. I like read a thing by him, and it was great. Well, didn't Michelle Bachman say she liked to read Mises on, oh, the, on the beach? beach. Yes, yes. She yeah. said she likes to go to the beach and and tan with her her copy of Human so, Action. So we'll picture her sixty year old <laughs> Graham Milfy body there in yeah. a in a tube top reading Mises. You know, I I wouldn't mind. Uh, oh, I'd do her. Do, doing Michelle Bachman, uh, but it, it would, would definitely be more. It would require a ball more... gag. Ball <laughs> gag, man. <laughs> a ball gag. I was gonna say it would require Sarah Palin to be there as well. So and consent. Know. They'd have to consent. I'm not talking about doing something aggressive. Oh no, not at all. Not at all. I mean, isn't Michelle Bachman's husband gay? I think that's the rumor. Like, and weren't they tied to some kind of pray the gay away? Uh, yeah. Although that would be a rumor people love to start just to denigrate it him. It would be. It would be. I haven't researched it. Screw researching Michelle Bachman. I mean, who the hell would have the time or inclination to do that? Uh, she's a. I don't know. I don't even know what she is. A hoe. Yeah. Put it that way. You can't Ross make per- a hoe a house president. Ross Perot. Oh, man. Ross Perot was really weird. Uh, he had a weird collection of images. Uh,. Let's see. He called affirmative action squishy. <laughs> uh, he said zero zero tolerance for sexual harassment. Gay rights are individual rights. Fund AIDS blitz. He called NAFTA, NAFTA opponents racist. Uh, so he's pro. He said homosexuality is an individual right. Um, but he was also like. He, well, NAFTA he, is not a free trade thing. Like NAFTA, to me, is more of a protectionist. Right. And, but he also wanted like anyway. you know extend the drug war and make it stronger. Um, but he wanted drug treatment for all addicts who are willing to seek it on demand. Uh, no, which, which, no, which you, the government would have to steal money to provide for that. So yeah, it's not anti. Enact strict gun control laws. I mean, f- d- deciding Texan whether Texan from Texarkana oil tycoon for <laughs> yeah. more drug for more gun control. What the hell? Curb curb oh, packs, no. ban soft money, ban the electoral college. So like, like fix politics, get rid of the Federal Reserve, and then fix politics. Um. He was weird, man. He was. There's no way you could call him a Democrat or Republican. He took yeah. like the weirdest from each and made it his yeah, uh, yeah. stance. You know. I guess. I guess I would describe that as confused. And I felt that way at some point in my life. Like there was a point after college when I was like reading a lot of Noam Chomsky, and I was kind of feeling like you know <laughs> the whole system is screwed up and you can't change it within the normal confines. But we need. We still need a system. You know. I didn't make that leap yet into anarchism. I was like, well, we st- we just he need was to your make gateway right drug. Fixes. He was your gateway drug. Chomsky. Yeah. Eh, eh, kinda. He was. He was my gateway drug to realizing how often we are lied to, which yeah. which is an important gateway drug to take. I think. Yep. Which is, you know, for a lot of people, I think the gateway drug is is nine eleven trutherism. Whether it's right or not, it makes them go like, "Wait, the government Wait, can do something yeah. this horrible?" Yeah, 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 yeah. I guess that's a uh, an important cherry to pop. Uh, you know. <laughs> okay, this is so a I really Ross Perot on foreign policy: less aid to allies, more aid to Russia. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! Uh, I don't know. Uh, hmm. Russia reduce nukes, contain imperialism, and send aid. <laughs> but this is this is post Cold War though, like right post. This was nineteen ninety six. No, he ran in nineteen ninety six. Yeah, so that's post Cold War. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. ninety one is yeah. Okay, duh. Durr. Durr. Never hire people who use drugs or alcohol. Um. Solving hmm. welfare by work will reduce crime. Education is a strong anti-crime program. Strong supporter of death penalty. Support in <laughs> recruit people of all religions, races, and genders. Top executives are overpaid. Reduce their pay. 
Mm-hmm. Man. It sounds it sounds like one big encyclopedia of dad spam. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like he man. was he was he was the dad spam prophet. Speaking of dad spam, we're gonna have my dad on here on Thursday, and uh, it's gonna be a ask him almost anything that's respectful, uh, especially about like. <laughs> My upbringing, although you know, because he he made made me what I am in, in a way. He was he was an important influence on me, especially with like my work ethic. Um, but the thing is, I kind of think he's totally not senile. He's ninety two, but he's very you know like in control of his mind, and he you know lives mm-hmm. by himself without help, and he's a pretty amazing guy. But he also, I think, he probably has really selective memory. Like if if so, you know, a question I'd like to have someone ask him is. Uh, you know, was was Michael anti-authoritarian as a child? And I think he would probably say no. He probably will not remember that. By, well, you well know, did you listen to your did you listen to your dad? Because as a father, you, you'd think you'd have some kind of bias there to where if your son, uh, you know, listened to you and did what you said and respected you, you probably wouldn't tend to think of him as anti Well, my parents divorced when I was nine and I lived with my mother and saw my dad on weekends and, you know, occasionally. So, uh it's it's hard to say, and I just think he's going to have selective memory. You know, probably thinks I was an angel. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So we'll You're, see. I don't know. That Michael Dean, he's a good boy. <laughs> My dad does, your dad does not have a does, southern accent. No. Does he call you Michael W. Dean, or does he mm. just call you Mike, or does he call you Michael Dean? What does he call you? Uh, well, you know, you're he, very, you're very particular about, you, you got, he does, it's got to be Michael W. Dean. He doesn't call me Michael W. Dean. Oh, he does when he mails me a letter, when he sends me, you know, printed dad spam, it says Michael W. Dean and, okay, okay. and DJ Dean. Although I think he's called her Donna before instead of everyone. When he get in trouble, does he call you Michael Wareham Dean? No, no. Is that how you pronounce your middle <laughs> name? I'm not capable of being, he is not capable of having me in trouble with him and he hasn't been for about 40 years, mm-hmm. so, or about mm-hmm. 25 years probably, so, okay. you know. Okay. Um, no, but uh, he calls he's called me James sometimes, you know, my brother's name. But that's pretty common with even younger parents, you know. Yeah, like, my my dad they're... has like five kids, and he'll go through the list, and somehow you're always the fifth one. Yeah, uh, are you ever the, the girls he's addressing? Yeah, yeah, he'll go, he'll go. Nadia, Cedric, Misha, Frank, Nima, <laughs> go do this. <laughs> it's like ah, uh, okay, and, wow. and then we're like, are we all supposed to do it, or just the last one you said? <laughs> Ross Pro supported a 50% gas tax increase to pay off deficit. Gross. That's like doubling it, isn't it? Like it was probably more than doubling it back then. Yeah. Oh, he was anti NAFTA. I read that wrong. But um uh, uh. he said now Na- Mexico provides escape from US environmental regulations and this planet is our home protected in the future. He's like the weirdest mixture of stuff that Democrats say and stuff Republicans say. Maybe he was trying to do like a big tent self aggrandizement thing, you know. I don't think so. I think this would no? piss everyone off. I mean, what percentage let's see what percentage of the vote he got. It was Ross it was in Perot. the it, in double digits. It was in two, double digits, yeah. Wasn't it like seventeen? I, I want to say it was yeah. like seventeen. It's the or last time there were actually three candidates on the ballot too in every state. Ah. Oh. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Ross frickin' Perot. Yeah, he got Man. wow. He got thirty nine percent of the vote. Holy crap! What year, really? In ninety yeah. six? Oh, he commanded. He run, no, he that in, so- no, that was in. No, uh, that was in. That was in polls. But uh, uh, let's see, what did he get uh, in the vote? Poll numbers begin to slip. He got eighteen point nine percent of the popular vote. That's uh, a lot. He, he got no electoral college votes, but he got nineteen million votes. Uh, oh, and one of his platforms was eliminate the electoral college. Okay, nice. So the president who won that year, which I guess would have been Clinton, uh, won only on a plurality. Like he didn't even have a majority of the people in the nation wanting him to rule and lord over them. Right. I guess right. I guess nobody ever okay. does, but yeah. he did, because you never have a majority of the people, you just have a majority of the registered voters who happen to vote that day. Uh, but even at at this point, you know. He only had a plurality of those registered voters who just happened to. Put is, that the electoral college is weird. I mean, in a country that's allegedly democratic, you're picking the people to vote for you. 
You are, yeah. yeah. And status would probably say, well, that's why it's a republic and not a direct democracy because we have a various safeguards. A buffer to- of wiser people to do the voting for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I don't even know if yeah. it was, if that, that yeah. particular thing was a thing about removal or was if it was a logistics thing since the whole It was thing a logistics was thing because there wasn't electronic ago. communication. It was, uh, right. I think there was some, you know, we're wiser than you in it, but it was also like, you know, you couldn't count all the votes of everybody overnight and get the results. You had to like send guys on horses to make the votes for you after yeah. your the district tells them how to vote. Yeah. Yeah. So why are we still using almost three hundred year old logistics? To well, a lot society? of statists, you know, a lot of statists, especially liberals who want to fix the system, uh want to do direct democracy, which they believe we could do by the internet now. You know. Yeah. Where like yeah. everybody votes on everything. And mandatory voting too, like in yeah. Australia. And you know, when I, I, I used to want that when I was going through that that Noam Chomsky period yeah. of, of wait, the system is screwed up, but we still have to have some kind of system. I was like, maybe that's the answer. Make everybody vote, and then it'll be Make. truly representative of of, of, peop- of what the people want. You know. Yeah, but you just have to look at the likes and dislikes on that Derek J video to know the problem with that. You know, <laughs> if they put it to a vote of should we make it punishable by death to question a cop, and yeah, you know, ninety eight percent of the people voting said yes. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, it is a big leap of faith in the masses, and you know, I feel like the statists always try to pin down libertarians on that point. Like, oh, you're just, uh, you know, overly optimistic, and you think everybody would be good to each other. It's like, no, that's what you think. If you're putting your faith in democracy, you're putting yeah, your talk faith about in the fact that, that more. Uh, talk you're about putting that your faith more. in the fact that 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 everybody in the society is going to be smart enough to decide how the society should be run, <clears throat> or that uh, politicians or the, or, are going to be smart enough yeah. and ethical enough to to do what so, they're. A left a to do what they're elected to do, and b uh, that what they're elected to do is moral. Yeah, yeah, and they're not going to. Uh, somebody tried to take us to task for saying people shouldn't vote by saying, "Well, screw the moral imperative." If there was somebody running that said they were going to end the wars, or if there's an anti-war candidate running, I'm going to vote for him because I don't want those that blood on my hands. And that George war. Bush was an anti-war candidate. That's your answer right there. Yeah, the answer is no. There's no such thing as an anti-war candidate. If you believe that, then I've got a bridge yeah. to your mom's house. I want to sell you, <laughs> or something. Turn, turn up a little. Turn up something. A bit. Something to that. Yeah. I, I'm yeah, just gonna yeah. sit close to the mic. I don't need to turn up. I just need yeah. to stop. Stop moving around. In I'll the say pocket, get loud. I'll say get louder. Get I think louder. You just you should get just louder. Stra- you should just strap a ribbon mic. Like make some kind of like to my dental face. device that holds yeah. it like yeah. four inches from your mouth. There you so, go. That's uh, not a bad idea, man. I want to talk a little bit about audio quality, man. Audio quality. The guy that called yesterday. Amazing. Uh, amazing sound. For, yeah. Especially from Skype because he called you on Skype. Yeah. I never heard Skype sound that good. And, you know, I thought the mic he was using was some really expensive thing. And I looked it up and it was like it was a thirty nine dollar uh, dynamic mic, you know, like a knockoff of an SM58, which is ninety nine dollar. Mm-hmm. You know, the same mic they have on every stage in every club in America in the world. Yeah. Um yeah, it was not. A, I mean, you you can get that mic used on fifth for fifteen bucks that he was using. Um, any the focus right interface he had isn't is, is two hundred bucks. Uh, is it a preamp or anything, or is it just a interface to USB? I don't know. I think it's just it's probably a preamp too because it's the same uh, setup pretty much as the one I use, which is pretty much the same lineup, but it's an M Audio brand. Uh, and mine has a preamp in it. It's not like an amazing preamp. It's just like a general bare bones preamp. So maybe it has something like that, but nothing like a you know a three band EQ or whoever that old guy was that made that compressor plus three band EQ. What was his name? Uh, anyway, for like the one I have. Yeah, we talked about him on the cast. He like invented stuff. Like oh, audio. Leo Fender. And he's got, got gear. No, he's got gear named after him. Oh, no, not, oh, as, not oh. as famous as Leo. The crazy, Fender. the crazy guy. The crazy one. Yeah, Joe Meek. Joe, Joe Meek. Joe Meek. That's it. I was reaching for Meek. Yeah, yep. he'd take. He'd it's get Meek. his over. He'd get his over the counter benzedrine amphetamine pills from the uh, from the the chemist, as they call a pharmacist in England, <laughs> and uh, you know, sit up and dismantle things all night, which is something people do on speed. On speed, there's four things people do. They either dismantle shit and try to fix it or make it better and they usually can't put it back together but he could or they put on women's clothing and stick things up their butt or <laughs> or they go dumpster diving and they're like compelled to dumpster dive or uh-huh. or they, they draw, build shelves they, they draw build shelves. they draw really complicated pictures over and over and over on paper that are really small and detailed and have a lot of figure eights in them mm-hmm. hmm. yeah those don't sound like fun things to do 
Or you do I'd them all at once. Video, I'd rather play video games than eat Cheetos. Well, there should be a video game of that, you know, so you can do it safely. <laughs> Meth addict. Yeah. yeah there Crocodil, you go. the game. <laughs> Croak Hunter. Croak, Croak Hunter. Okay. Okay. I could dig it. Yeah, that that might be fun. It, it'd be in some kind of like post-apocalyptic Russian state society. Yeah, that'd be cool. So awesome. getting back to microphones, um, it's really interesting to me that we were just blown away by his sound and he was using, you know, not a ribbon mic like we use, not a condenser mic like we use, but... Uh, you know, a dynamic mic, which is like the mm-hmm. cheapest and lowest fidelity of all mics. And actually, the um, the default mic for talk radio for people that can afford it is an Electrovoice RE20, which is a mic that's been around since the '60s. And um, and there's actually an updated version of it. I can't remember what it is, but Ian Freeman and Free Talk Live use them. You know, they're yeah. about four hundred. And, they, and they sound they sound way they sound, pro too. They sound way pro, but they also have yeah. some outboard gear that's really good. And they they have radio voices. I mean, Ian Freeman talks in a radio voice when he's not. You know, I talked to him yeah. on the telephone, and he talks in a radio voice. Yeah, yeah. Which is what happens when you do six shows a week for ten years, I guess. Mm, yeah, Has or maybe ten years. Maybe he got into radio because he had that voice. Mm, maybe, maybe. But it really got me thinking about like, you know. We we talk endlessly about our wonderful condenser mics and uh, you know tube condenser mics or or simulated tube condenser mics like I'm using and our ribbon mics and how great they are and most podcasters use condenser mics because um, they've gotten really cheap and pretty good and made in China and but really like <laughs> to, the the sound of talk radio you know like NPR Rush Limbaugh Hardball. You know, Hardball. those guys those guys all use RE twenties or a variation on the Electro Voice RE twenty, um, which are dynamic. There's mics. less of a proximity effect, isn't there? That would right. be my interest in it, is because uh, I like I like th- th- this is me. Yeah, this is me being. I like the the proximity. I like the proximity effect. Now watch me literally move two inches from that spot. All right, and and do you hear the difference? Yeah, well, proximity effect day, isn't it? Proximity effect is uh, with condenser mics and ribbon mics. When you get closer, you get a big boost in the bass frequencies, and dynamic mics amazing. Do not when you're away. Uh, Yeah. Although, you know, with a dynamic mic, you just naturally, I guess it wouldn't be naturally, but unnaturally boost the EQ at the low end uh, in your preamp or whatever. And and then you could be anywhere you know within the radius of the pickup for the mic. Free Talk Live is actually coming great. up on its ten year anniversary in two weeks. They started November third, two thousand and two, from a radio station in Sarasota, Florida, and it was ah, it was Ian and uh, and Mark right? and Mark. Yep. And then they yeah, moved right. to Florida and became the voice of wow. the Free State movement that some people in the Free State movement says don't respect, uh, a, a, don't a represent. Decade. Them. That's a that's a congratulations, man. What are they, yeah, are they doing? Something special. That's oh, awesome. Ten I have, years. I have, I have, I've, I've been really busy lately and haven't been listening to a lot of Liberty Media because I've been making yeah. so much of it, man. I'm making four shows a week, including yeah. the editing and uploading. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I'm thinking next time you or I have a little money and see you know, a decent dynamic mic for under 50 bucks, we should grab it and play around them a little bit. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I might do that. I might do that. Yeah. I might get one of these Focusrite audio interfaces too, because uh, it would be nice to have both of my computers on an audio interface instead of yeah. just the yeah. good one. Uh, I'd be agree. better for for butt casting and um and other things. I could imagine you know doing so much more with two completely souped up audio computers. Let's go sell some things and then come back and talk more about microphone porn. Yay. Want to contribute to Liberty but short on cash? You can help the Freedom Fiends without even spending a post-1964 dime. Download uTorrent and start seeding Fiends episodes. Follow twitter.com slash fiendtorrents to grab the past episodes and new ones as they post. Leave your computer on seeding the torrents while you're at work or asleep. The more people seeding the Fiends, the more drone-proof we'll be when the boot comes down. That's twitter.com slash fiendtorrents. What does freedom mean? Tune in to LRN.FM to find out. LRN.FM is the Liberty Radio Network, a collection of live talk radio and podcasts, all coming from a principled pro-liberty perspective. LRN.FM show hosts aren't left, right, or conspiracy kooks. You can tune in 24-7 to LRN.FM via your phone, computer, satellite, and more. Listen free anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN. FM. Have you swallowed too much of the state's poison? The Freedom Fiends will stick their fingers down your throat and hold your hair back while you hurl. 
Check out the new show, The Freedom Fiends Agenda, on Adam Curry's No Agenda Global Radio, streaming live every Thursday from 3.30 to 5.30 p.m. East Coast U.S. time. Listen live at nageradio.com. That's nageradio.com. Call in soon before they get droned. I talked about last week about um, the microphone porn of that guy who recorded Slish in his studio. There's a YouTube video of it. Eric Valentine, uh, Barefoot ah, Studios did, in Redwood City, Redwood City, California. But I didn't link mm-hmm. it, so I'm going to link it. Ah, okay. Did you get a chance to look at it? No, I did look at the website you sent me with like a rundown on every mic ever, ever made and its qualities <laughs> and how to soup it up and make it sound better and all that kind of stuff. Click, was, on, the, awesome. click on the link I just uh, pigeoned, on the pigeon, sent to you pigeon. via Pigeon. Oh, man, you've been tr- going the whole time without saying the actual name of it. <laughs> now you said pigeon. What does that make us hackable or something? Doesn't. Yes, they're they're going to. They could see from our network pigeons. traffic what we're going to shoot our pigeons. Obama <laughs> bought me a shotgun. <laughs> I'm gonna go shoot some libertarians. Ugh. Do people really think like that? I don't know. I think they I do. Think they, no, they, they, they want, want the, the they want the cops. They yeah. want the cops to shoot libertarians and yeah. drone us. Yeah. yeah. Uh, or at, G- at least grab our junk painfully, more painfully, <laughs> when we're at the airport. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, this guy's got some awesome mics. Look at that. Yeah. They're in like little cubby holes, like in kindergarten. Like he's got a whole class <laughs> of mics there. A whole school of microphones. Yeah. And they're all old looking. They're all they're all old. I mean some of those yeah. mics are worth ten grand. I mean yeah. Wow. Wow. Yep. Yeah, I recorded in this studio, man. It's pretty awesome. It's also the first time I was ever in a studio where they did anything on a computer other than the billing. Uh this was in nineteen my oh god, when was this? Ninety six. And uh they didn't. They recorded on um, on tape, but they wanted to do an edit on the master after they mixed it down to two tracks. In that song, Super Goose, the middle eight went on way too long, and the the producer, uh, Davy Farragher, just said, "No, nah, just chop that out." And they just put it into a computer, chopped it out, and printed it back to tape. Now, interesting thing that he talks about in this video, and this this was before nonlinear editing, or right, was it after? Right, uh, it existed. Uh, well, I don't know because. Uh, because that, that's a really easy thing to do, but you're making it sound like it required some skill back then. Well, I, they were only doing it with the two-track mix down. They weren't doing the whole uh, project. Uh, you know, it would have uh, taken too much memory probably to do the whole project that way. But okay, um, okay. but interesting, and this is a more recent video. This is from 2011. In this video, he talks about how they record, and they record uh, everything to 16-track tape, and then from there like live like from the record and playback heads and then dump it into the computer so they use mm. the tape as a preamp or nice. like as, nice. to to like give so it a more it saturated that, sound that, has yeah that tape sound yeah which i've That's never cool. heard of anyone doing but it's pretty cool i don't yeah. know how many times he reuses the tape i think that might be an issue but and it's hard to get tape but he does that i had his. all those mics i would try to record them all at once <laughs> with, like, with like something simple like vocals see so watching this with the sound off the sound on. You just yeah. can't hear it. I'm going to embed this. Um, some of these mics are awesome looking. Uh, I don't remember what mics we used. I don't know if he busted. We didn't. We weren't in there for a lot of time, so he didn't bust out. You know, he didn't try a lot of different things. They just set up some mics and recorded us. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he's he's pretty awesome. He's uh he's the guy that was Eric Valentine. And I was watching this whole video looking for my painting because I gave him a painting. I did. I, I did some paintings in my life that are interesting. And I gave one to him. It's called Bleed All Over the Milky Way. And it's a painting of a slit wrist bleeding all over the Milky Way. And mm. uh, somebody said that they were in his studio recently and it's on the wall there. And uh, cool. I looked for it, cool. but, you know, there's like 12 rooms in the studio and one of them is giant. So yeah, I didn't see it. But yeah. My, and my all I see now is close ups of, of him playing with the mics, fondling his fondling tools. Fondling the mics. Yeah. <laughs> a, lot of ri- a lot of ribbon <laughs> yeah. mics there, petting his mics. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, what's that? What's that sound umbrella above the drum kit? That's pretty that's pretty awesome. cool too. Yeah, he explains that it's uh it's for changing the room tone on the fly. <laughs> that's sweet. Wow, wow. What? This is a really amazing studio. Like, what it famous really people have been recorded here, other than you? Uh, Third Eye Blind. He's actually done some rap. He did the Conscious Daughters and Paris. Um. I think maybe that band Cake. You know, I forgot Cake. to say Michael Urbano played with Cake live. Ah, we were, we were okay, talking about Cake okay. recently. Uh, let's see. My Eric Valentine has recorded Queens of the Stone Age, 
La, uh, Good Charlotte, Slashes, Solo Record, Third Eye Blind, Smash Mouth. Mm. Uh, yeah. Bunch awesome. of yeah. stuff, man. T-Ride. Yeah. He's the guy that was in that band T-Ride, which was the yeah. hair metal band that sounded like Queen that got signed for a million dollars, which was the most an unknown band had ever been signed for at the time. Mm. And they were smart. Instead of spending it on you know, tranny hookers and limos and cocaine. They spent, they spent it, on, spent it on this studio. Nice. Yeah. And I don't, I don't that's know what, what I would do if I got any kind of advance. Yeah. And then they spent four years. in more gear. And then they spent four years making the record and the same week it came out, Nirvana's Nevermind came out and no one wanted to hear music that sounded like Queen <laughs> yeah. anymore. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. But the market, where the market know, changed, man, where it wasn't, other, it wasn't central Nirvana planning that changed where, that. where other bands that got signed and dropped for the same reason around that time are now, you know, working at Fry's at best and living under a bridge like a common troll at worst. He's running a very successful kick ass recording studio. <laughs> he is. Yeah. Yeah. Good job, guy. Uh, yep. Eric he's Valentine, a, right? He's a really cool guy, too, man. He's really sweet, really good-natured. You know, when when me and Bean were recording Slish in there and we were screaming at each other in the control room, he kept calm. You know, he was mellow. Nice, nice. Yeah. Do you, do you think there are actual, like, internet trolls that also live under bridges? <laughs> like, they live like, under that pic- like that picture of Nemo without podcasting. It was like some homeless guy <laughs> with his laptop. Well, I, bet, actually, I bet there are trolls who are actual trolls. Actually, too. bridge is an internet term. There's, you know, a router can have a bridge, which is to connect two different mm-hmm. router networks. So mm-hmm. they live, mm-hmm. the internet trolls live under a router bridge. There you go. There you go. In the data Troll. closet. Data closet. Come out of the data closet. Mm. Did data come out of the closet? <laughs> Star, I don't know, man. Star Trek or Warzy or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. The only sci fi I read is Scott Beezer. Rhymes with too. geezer. It's 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 in color now. Did you notice that? I know it's uh, like it's like in in uh, what's the first color movie? Uh, Wizard of Oz. Just, you know, it starts bad. out. Oh, okay. it starts. Oh no, no, they did it smart. It was like they owned the technology. You know, they had the we have the patents on this technology. So instead of just starting to make movies color, they made like a blockbuster movie that was written for the purpose of. It starts black and white in Kansas. The the, the killer app. Yeah. Yeah. And then when she wakes up in Oz, everything's color. And it's not just color. It's like hyper color. Like everything, like they they pick the costuming, they pick the backgrounds, they pick the filters, everything. So it just looked like, oh my God, movies just changed, you know? Yeah. 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 Awesome. Awesome. Yep. Yep. Um, All right. What else we got for fiends, man? Talk about Liberty, man. Liberty. Liberty's awesome. You know what I didn't mention? Free. I you know, should be free. You know what we didn't mention about Pulp Fiction, the movie? It was actually produced yeah. by Disney. Gross. Well, it's kind of weird. It was um, Miramax is owned by Disney, and that's the studio that paid for it. And it was the first movie on Miramax, and it was uh, run. Miramax was run by Harvey Weinstein, who I've met. I met at the Deauville Film Festival. Harvey Weinstein is uh, who the guy... Harvey Weingart on Entourage is based. That really abusive, insane, you know, uh, you'll never work in this town again drama kind of guy. Oh, you don't know that. You don't know mm-hmm. that, man. You don't know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm, ignorant. Um, I'm so I'm so ignorant. I'm, I'm all my ignorant shit. Yeah. There's so much yeah. to talk about, but I don't know, man. I don't know. Yeah. We've been fiendsing for, for I think, the time here. Um, yeah. I could, yeah. I could, I could, uh, wrap we just it up, need baby. to end it on, on a good note. Like we always do something awesome. Uh, I guess Mac, the mics, the mics are awesome. Okay. Mac users awesome. and PC users always fight with each other. And especially Mac users are like PC users are horrible. They don't know the brilliance of the jail that is the Macintosh. But really, when you think about it, Mac and PC users are the Democrats and Republicans and Linux users are the libertarians. Are the libertarians. Okay. <laughs> it's like good, the, the Linux users know that both Mac and PC are wrong. Right, right. But but good libertarians can still use either Mac or PC, depending yeah. on their needs. Just and like we can and, still drive on the roads. And the guy who co-invented Linux, GNU Linux, uh, is a liberal. I'm a liberal. GNU. GNU, GNU. Richard Stallman. Yeah. GNU is just such a dumb word anyway. Who the hell wants to say GNU? I know. I know. I mean, I, I don't think I ever want to say that again. I am hereby banning GNU from my own <laughs> vocabulary. From the Freedom Fiend Central Planning. 
Yes, yes. I will now stay. Uh, I don't know. Something, something, something. Referencing Stallman. What's good? Someone, one? someone asked me about the golden floppy disk of redemption. They're like, "You're still using a floppy disk?" And I'm like, "That's I started, the funny part. That's the I, funny." Well, but I started the list 15 years ago. It's actually now the um, golden encrypted USB thumb di- no, drive of no, redemption. But no. we kept the name. Don't change it. We Don't kept the name. It. Yeah. Okay. It's yeah. not even a thumb drive. Even that's outdated. So if you want to get on, now. if you want to get on the golden floppy disk of redemption, which is the list of people we will spare when we're the libertarian tyrants of the world and rounding people up to uh, libertarian reindoctrination camps, there's a couple ways to get off that. One is to donate. One is to um, <clears throat> go onto iTunes if you have an iTunes account and review and rate the Freedom Fiends and Anarchy Gumbo podcast. And rate if you have an me. Amazon account and you've seen Guns and Weed or. Uh, uh, gun training with the non-aggression principle. Go on Amazon and review and rate them. And if you haven't seen them, buy them and then review and rate yeah. them. Yeah, do that. Those things are all good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, man. I think I'm done. <laughs> I have to go do some housework and yard work before it snows. Yes. I'm I have to do to housework go. before it snows in my house. Mm. Fall cleaning. Yeah. yeah, have fun with that. I should probably do house chores too, but I doubt I will. I'll probably yeah. do something more fun. <clears throat> <laughs> All right. Peace, fiends. All right. Thanks, man. Worms. Worms. Gun Training with the Non Aggression Principle, Volume 1. Basic Handgun and Rifle with Jared Waltz. First rule of being alive is you own yourself. A groundbreaking approach to firearms and self defense training. Beautifully filmed and easy to understand instructions make this one a must have. Gun Training with the Non Aggression Principle, Volume 1. New DVD from Michael W. Dean. Available on Amazon. Your house is your property. Hello, Freedom Fiends. It's your boy Dean from the U.S. Get the U.S. out my bloodstream. I owe me and that include indoor fiends. No one won't ask permission and I won't say please. Freedom fans, for fact that I got a the Freedom Fiends podcast is covered by a Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike 3.0 license. Do what you want with it and spread it around. Tell two friends. Make copies. Email it to everyone you know. Go on the site and comment. This is a conversation. Every week, we'll have an exciting new episode where Michael W. Dean and Nima Vadati weave their own unique take on the way the world works and how to find your place in it. Available from freedomfiends.com. That's F R E E D O M F E E N S dot com. Freedom Fiends is proudly syndicated by Alterati.com, the Liberty Radio Network, and No Agenda Global Radio. Subscribe and tell two friends. And remember, the only power they have is the power you allow them. We're not saying the Freedom Fiends are the one true path to anarchist liberation, but it's a good one. If you want to put your voluntarist money where your mouth is, consider making a donation to the Freedom Fiends. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the spinning coin on any post. Then make a one-time gift via PayPal or set up a monthly contribution of as little as $3. Giving to the Freedom Fiends helps advance education of horizontal liberation throughout the world. The Freedom Fiends. We work hard, so send us some money.